Dude, you brought up a good point about those uh, those proud boys that are like this country music, this pop country music's bullshit. Like, why do you think that's happened? Because I thought that Thomas read about it, and he's like, "Yeah, but when the Outlaws came out back in the day, like Willie and Waylon and all them, they were saying back then that's not country music." And now we all look back at that like, "Man, what an era for country music." Yeah, uh, I think there's some stuff now that's a little more of a stretch, you know? Yeah, I mean, comparing Waylon Jennings to you know, Johnny Cash saying they're night and day back then. It's not quite like some of the hip hop type stuff we have yeah. going out, but music does change all the time. And there's a lot of different musically ways you can go in this genre. But I, I always say that the storytelling is what makes country music. Song that has a story, has some kind of meaning. That's the kind of thing about country. Obviously, you can go like techno bar and just it's like people just want to dance. And people like to have a good time. There's songs like that too. But I always say if it's got some kind of meaning to it and story, it can be somewhat considered country music right but there's a line for you are you ever surprised on certain country music that takes off or gets wildly popular i, I am but it's also like how many country artists you've seen that have come out had a song to and then gone pop you know i mean there's a lot of those so yeah. Taylor Swift. yeah i mean there's just a. I think that country music the way it's set up especially with country radio and this town how it's so connected so different than any other genre because like where is pop music at you know where's rock happen you know, so like L.A., I guess, I don't know, but you don't have to live there. It's kind of all over. But you can come to Nashville, sign a deal, meet the radio PDs and do this one and have a career in country music, even if you go a different way after that. So a lot of people start here. But I think that, the you know, what, what you originally asked about why there are those people that are like, this isn't country, kind of put their foot down, is like, it's such an era of like, everybody wants to know about the guy nobody knows about first. Mm -hmm. I remember when Chris Stapleton, I saw him playing in Birmingham. This is the it was the year that he blew up. He had the three a ACM awards or whatever. Still and, the steel drivers. Yeah, yeah. And but I mean, you know, I think what do you listen to was one he had like on YouTube. I don't know if he had any music out, but I remember thinking that was the coolest thing ever. And then when he kind of blew up, I'm thinking like, ah, it's not that. It was cool. Which is he's still great. He still puts yeah. out great songs. But I, people are like that about it. I had a lot of them in my career that would like have burnt CDs of stuff I wrote when I was like 16 years old, and that was what they would request at my shows. Yeah, and those songs were garbage. But they just wanted me to know that they knew him. That's all it was. You yeah, know? So yeah, it's like, yeah. You're saying you were that way with Chris Stapleton. I was, yeah, with a lot you're of like, folks. You knew you were on him early. And yeah, then when and he like, blew up, you're kind of like, ah, I would, like how many times people like, hey, no, no, remember I put you on that. Remember, yeah. I, that's what everybody wants to do. So yeah. it's like the stuff that gets commercial becomes less cool to a lot of fans, I think. But it's, you know, kind of a double-edged that's sword. A fair point. Yeah. What's, I think your, that's what's a your point. struggle? Is there a struggle at all of like kind of, Conforming to the mainstream country music and where it's at, because you could easily, uh, yeah, and with the backing you have, you could go and put some techno beats on something and have it play across every club everywhere all the time. Yeah, and you know, it's, there's still time. Uh, yeah, there's still time to sell out. It's <laughs> it's such he said, a, brother, give me a week. Like, yeah, actually, I got a couple of things coming out right now. Techno yeah, era out yeah. there. Things don't turn my way, man. It's a uh, it's a weird time. What I'll say is it's it's really hard to have blinders on in this town. Just because it's so easy to watch what somebody else is doing, go, oh, they're having success, they're having success. And then also you've got the fact that a lot of these songwriters write for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, they have a style of writing too. They know what's getting played. Songwriters don't make anything unless it's on the radio and a hit anyway. So they want songs to go on the radio. And for a song to get put on the radio, it has to sound something. Mm -hmm. uh, the word I'll use is somewhat commercial. It's got to be uh, very relatable to a mass audience. So what that does is it takes some things that are what I would say cool and kind of makes them live in a different space, which fortunately for me and a lot of artists now, uh, the Tyler Childers of the world, there is another space they can live in and you can have a great career without having that, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it does, man. It's, uh, I'm in a great spot because I've, I've kind of got a little of both. So I've got some grassroots following that people that found me a long time ago before radio. And then I've also got some a couple of songs that were hits on the radio. So it's finding that line of who and commercial and trying to get songs that are that, I think that's the, the struggle that everybody's got. When you're talking about uh, songwriters and how they, they write to put stuff on the radio because that's the only way they can make money, how do you go about writing? Like, Do you have a certain core group of dudes or you kind of bounce around a little I, bit? I do. I don't try a lot of new folks just because I, I know what songs I'm going to get with certain guys. You know, like I write a lot, of, a lot of stuff with the same core guys. And also it's really, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You know, writing songs. It, it, I mean, I, yeah, there's, I guess, some skills that you can be born with you can kind of work on and get better at. But it's like you sit in with people you like. You're going to write better songs with people you enjoy being around, people that grew up the same way, whatever that is. You know, but I mean, even still, my biggest songs I wrote by myself. So it's kind of keeping a little bit of that both, trying to, 
you know, find some guys that can write stuff that know what's going to get played on the radio and then write some stuff that's really, for lack of a better term, me, you know, and just play it out and see what works. I think a lot of my success came from just playing songs on YouTube or Facebook, I guess, at the time and just seeing what people thought. They liked it. I'd go record it. You see, when you talk about, like, not being rocket science, dude, it kind of seems like it because no musical talent over here. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I heard Will sing in the car you. yesterday. <laughs> Dang. That boy can belt it out. He's putting out Maroon 5 like it was nothing. <laughs> he was getting after it. But I, you go, like, we all sit in the car, dude, and I'll put that radio up to 10, and I'll be singing and be like, fuck, why, why couldn't I have thought about doing this? Or I, why couldn't I do, like... Well, I feel that all the time. Yeah, I but it's I like, wrote you, you say it's not rocket science. Brother, like, it's, it's an absolute talent. Like, where, how did you learn to even write music? Like, how did that process start for you? It was, it's, it's it was really accidental. So my granddaddy Buford was a really witty guy. Like, What a name. Wrote, yeah, Buford Green, man. Wrote uh wrote poems and and like drew and painted and stuff whatever he he was he just had really good words I guess but we didn't write songs I wasn't doing country music back then but I I, I think that I got a little wit from him he was really good with just that kind of thing but as far as like writing songs when I started my career I was just get I guess so tired of playing the songs I knew I was playing covers at bars every night and I was like man I if I wrote a song kind of like this just to change something up and people started to like them a couple of them did well and. I just, I learned to write from playing shows. So like fans taught me how to write. I, if something went over one line really made people go, oh yeah. Then I thought, well, it's something more like that. So I did that for, you know, six or eight years before I ever stepped foot in Nashville. So I, I just think it, it made me write a certain way. And a lot of those guys that are having that success outside of country radio, say Tyler Childers, Texas country, a lot of that stuff, they're not here writing. They're wherever they're from yeah, writing. Right. And, and, that, and that's where that, comes from so they're writing from a different place than everybody else are those tyler chillers in that texas country is that kind of your favorite I, i've liked texas country stuff for a long time but you know i just think different is cool i mean a lot of what eric church did i thought was different you know like he had some stuff that he put out that's you know it doesn't sound like everything else i think that's the best thing you can have right now i think that's where success come from luke combs when he first came out there was nobody that sounded like luke to me you know, whatever the music sounds like, his voice was recognizable. It's so easy now for an artist to get a song on the radio, maybe become a hit, and then people go, and the song comes on, go, oh man, I love that song, and not who sings it. They have right. no clue who the guy is, you know. Yeah, because so, they would, you would sit there and be like, oh, that's who sings it. Oh, right. this guy. There's, I mean, there's there's guys with four or five number ones on the radio that people don't know who it is. They they sing along and tap their foot when it comes on, but that's such a big hurdle to get over unless you have something that's a little different, right? You know. It's unique seeing the people that are singing the songs too. Like you brought up Tyler Childers a couple of times, and before, like you hear his songs, then you look him up. And you're like, I did it, not so, think sometimes that man. That is interesting. Like, uh, who's that? Uh, Coulter the Wall. Coulter Wall, and yes, dude, is it Wallen or Wall? Wall. Coulter Wall. Coulter Wall. He looks. Dude, you look at him, and you're like, sounds like he looks like a teenager, and he's got that yeah. deep ass voice. Yeah, it's crazy. 